Can you hear me? I oh, know you can. Thanks very much. Uh, I'm not the CEO, by the way. I'd probably like to be, have the ego to be, but I'm not. I'm the general manager for the EMEA region, just to be clear in case Simon Kalaf gets to hear that I'm claiming to be him in Europe. So we've got a lot of stats, and thanks very much, Marco, for the introduction. Flurry tracks almost every smartphone and tablet in the world. We track 720 million active devices in the month of September. So what I'm about to scuttle through, and I have a bewildering number of data points, is from real data, from real smartphones, from active usage, inside applications, inside sessions. It's not panel-based. We're not ComSchool. We're not Nielsen. We don't take 10,000 and extrapolate it on a guest basis. It's actual data. So there's a ton of stuff to go through. Flurry is not just an analytics business. We do give that a software way for free. We use that data to power uh, an, an advertising network called AppCircle, and we've just launched an ad management system called AppSpot that helps publishers around the world cut and slice their, their audience by data. You'll hear me talk about data a lot today. Um, to help monetize app audiences more effectively by giving the brand advertisers what they've been yearning for for many a year, which is age, gender, and persona targeting. So I said I've got a lot of data to, to get through. So we can see that once people have a smartphone with application uh, content, it immediately impacts what happens on the web, what happens on the desktop web, what happens on the mobile web. And we can see that one's cannibalizing the other. And I've got a slide further on the presentation around that. We can also see that once you have those choices of social networking applications, they might be dating, they might be IM, they might be email. Um, we can also see that people are actually spending more time outside Facebook than inside Facebook on smart devices in applications. So it's often a, uh, an assumption that everyone spends all of their social networking time in Facebook. Not actually true. But this revolution that we're seeing is crazy. And it's probably the biggest content revolution we're all going to ever experience in our lifetime. And it's a ton of fun. We can see it's 10 times faster than the PC revolution of the 80s. It's two times faster than the internet boom of the 90s. And it's even three times faster than what's happening in social networking right now. And it's an incredible time to be in the digital economy. It's an incredible time to be developing audiences inside applications and on smartphones and on tablets. It's a crazy, crazy time. Faster adoption than any other adoption we've ever seen. Electricity, toasters, microwaves, ovens, uh, anything you could possibly guess would be faster adoption than smartphone application adoption. And we could also see that we're only just starting out. People often ask Flurry, well, if I start developing an audience in applications, am I too late? And the absolute categorical answer is no. We're only about the third of the way through. What we would see is the, the addressable market. If you look at middle income people around the world that can afford eventually a smartphone, we think that number's around 2 billion. We also saw in the month of August 660 million active devices. I've already told you that September that's now increased to 720. So about only the third of the way through the addressable market for smartphone users and tablets around the world. And I'm just going to look at some of those markets and focus in on where we think some of that big potential is. China, you know, it's got 128 million devices active as of last month. But you can see also that, that China's compound annual growth is over 400%. No wonder, I guess, when the, the population of China is 1.3 billion. But of course, not all of those will be able to afford a smartphone going forward. I did say there was a lot of data, so hang on to your hats. We've got about another eight minutes of this stuff. And I think this presentation will be available. We also wanted to have a look, because the, the panel is going to talk about the race for operating systems. So iOS and Android dominates a lot of the, the conversation, obviously. But what's happening with Windows? What's happening with Windows 8? What's happening to BlackBerry and RIM? And this is a measure of developers that activate a new project with us. And which of those two, comparing RIM to Windows Phone, are growing? And we saw over the summer that a significant uptake in Windows projects. And that's developers spending some time outside iOS and Android developing their games or their applications for the, for the Windows market. Windows 8 is proving to be a particular challenge, by the way. We need to define a, uh, a new identification scheme for those devices. CTO and I had a long conversation last night. It's actually proving quite complex. But we'll be back to you on that. And as a developer, you can expect us to support Windows 8. And indeed, HTML5, we, look, we, we support both of those on analytics uh, as of today. 
And you can see this in share. So you can see that, again, this is reflected that Windows Phone is now starting to take a small share. Admittedly, this is only Flurry's view of the world. We track 240,000 applications for about 80,000 companies. It's about 75% of the top grossing apps around the world. So it's a pretty deep measure of what's going on. But it is only Flurry's view, just a health warning. Looking at the economy and the ecosystem from a revenue perspective, in-app purchase and paying for downloads was worth just over 5.4 billion last year. We think it's going to be worth about 8.7 billion this year. But the thing that people often miss is the growing slice of that that's advertising. Now, yes, yes, I know Flurry's in the advertising business as well as the data business, so Richard Firmiger may uh, have a, a, an ulterior, ulterior motive for saying this, but we're actually, this is data that we're tracking, this is revenue we're tracking for across 240,000 applications. And now over 2 billion estimated this year is available for advertising revenue. So if you're in the freemium model, if you're producing content inside applications that users can download for free, don't forget the advertising piece. It's a growing percentage, currently 23%, up 100% year on year to a billion last year. I mentioned about this cannibalization of, uh, of app usage versus web usage. And this is where we compare web usage not only on the desktop, but the mobile, and also how that compares to, to what you're doing inside applications. And you can see that's gone from 43 minutes to 94 minutes in about two years. And that's just continued to set to grow. People love native apps. In fact, most users don't even know what a native app is. They just know those beautiful pieces of content, their favorite games, their favorite weather apps, their favorite rail timetable app, their favorite dating app. It's all inside their smartphone. That is where they're spending most of their time. And it's about 80% of all time spent per day versus browsing is inside applications. Again, it's going to be one of the things we're going to talk about as a panel. I'm flying through. So this is about day part usage compared to TV, the internet, and iOS and Android. And the red line is, uh, is iOS and Android. And you can see that usage starts pretty early, starts to peak at around 7, 7 AM, and grows steadily throughout the day. So it's people have switched on almost all of the time. Compared to, let's say, TV, obviously, where there's a, a lower usage during the day, and then a much bigger peak in the evening. And actually, we see session lengths on iPhones and, and, and on, on phones is much smaller than tablets. You'd expect tablets to be longer dwell time and in the evening. So tablets actually do reflect more of our TV consumption style than it does uh, phones. And also, for those that do have a smart device, on average, 84% are spending at least 1.7 hours on smartphones as well as watching the television. People often talk about this first screen, second screen. And I, I think the primary screen, screen is whichever is entertaining you the most. And if the content's great on TV, that will become the first screen. But for the vast majority of us, most of the time, I think we think that we see what's inside our tablet, what's inside our smartphone, is actually, by and large, most of the time, more entertaining. That becomes our first screen. You still with me? I said it was a breathtaking run at a lot of data. Maybe I've picked off too much more than I can chew. But this is looking at time consumption compared to, to spend. Just out on the right there, we spend 1%, we spend 23% of our time inside smartphones, but actually marketers are only spending on average 1% of their marketing budget on mobile. And that old adage, you've got to fish where the fish are, that will apply. That gap is definitely going to narrow. When I was in internet advertising for DoubleClick 12 years ago, we talked about this gap in time spent online and, time, and money spent on, on marketing. That gap not only closed, but actually overtook in the UK. I think we lead the world still. And you can see that most marketers are willing to spend a lot more on mobile this year and next year than they were last year. Indeed, over a third are willing to increase their mobile budget by more than 50%. So there's a lot of money going to be spent in the marketplace. And we think that's going to grow in three years from around 5 billion. So the overall advertising pie is worth about 5 billion, we think, this year and about uh, 11 billion come 2015. But an awful lot's got to happen before that. And I mentioned about targeting. Brands are screaming for audiences to be cut and sliced according to their target audience, age, gender, personas. And, and I think at the moment, those loosely targeted campaigns have got to convert into pinpoint accuracy to really reach those that they really know are the sweet spot of their customer base. 
unable to measure. So a lot of companies have spent a lot of money on advertising on mobile without any ability to measure that. And there are some clever, clever folks, including Flurry, that are providing measurement tools that help you take the guesswork and be much more scientific with how you're actually buying media on mobile. And obviously, fragmentation. It's actually, there are lots of places you can buy mobile, mobile advertising at the moment. And that's got to consolidate. That's got to get easy. But it's hard getting into the top 100. It's hard getting anywhere that's visible. There's a huge focus on rank. There's a huge focus on being in the top 25. It is crazy, because there are over 100, 800,000 DGP applications in the world to choose from as consumers. What a choice. But marketers often come to us and say, but can you get me in the top 25? And Nick's here from SOMO, and I was at Yahoo before Overture. We were both at Overture. And there used to be the obsession about keywords and search buying and getting number one on the keyword that's appropriate to your category. And we had to guise a lot of, lot of advertisers about, well, why do you want to be number one? And in this world, in mobile world, why do you want to be in the top 25? Is it appropriate? Is it achievable? Is it realistic to get in the top 25? And only 4% of Interbrand top 100 companies are in the top 100. Uh, that's Google, Amazon, HSBC, and eBay. So it's a tough job if you're a brand to get into the top 100. And we have about 80, 85 apps on our phones, but we only use about 5 to 10 on average uh, in any given week. And retention is a huge issue. So after one month, on average, application developers are losing just over 60% of their audience. After 12 months, I'm afraid to say that most app, on average, app developers lose 96% of their audience. And I didn't want to finish on a sour note, but I just know that there's a, there's a panel coming out, and I don't want to take up any more time. So I hope that insight sets the scene for a really engaging panel. And I hope that that data wasn't too fast, too much, but a lot of insight as to what's going on in mobile. Thank you. <laughs>